In this video, I want to do a quick overview of some of the new features coming to OpenVAT for Unity. It's been a while since I upgraded the implementation of OpenVAT Unity. Right now, you can grab these tools in a Unity package, which I'll link in the description. After I flush out all the kinks and everything that I need to add into this to make it fully functional, it will be available through the OpenVAT Unity Git. Right now, since it's still in development, you can just grab this Unity package and get all of the tools that have been developed up to this point. I'm pretty excited about a lot of the features, and I just wanted to make this video to show off some of the new things coming. So if you've used OpenVAT for Unity before, you know that there is a OpenVAT setup window. This is under Tools, OpenVAT, OpenVAT Setup, and the panel looks like this. You enter a folder path in your Unity project that contains your model, the JSON data from OpenVAT, and your VAT texture or textures if you did a separate normal map. And then you can just press this process OpenVAT content button, and it will automatically create a prefab for you set up with a material. What's new in this implementation is you can actually change the shader selection here. And I now have an advanced option and a simple option. There will be a lot more shader options here in the full implementation. And I'll have demos to go along with specific use cases for each implementation of these shaders. Right now, to keep it simple for this video, we have an advanced shader and a simple shader. Even by the time I release this, there will probably be PBR versions of both of these. But for right now, I want to go over the differences between advanced and simple. So simple is similar to the implementation for Unreal Engine, where basically you get a looping version of your vertex animation texture uh, over the set amount of frames of your animation. Here's an example of what that shader kind of looks like. We have our fat texture, which has the position and normals packed, um, our min values and our max values, which were automatically filled in for us the Y resolution and frame rate, which were also automatically filled in, um, and frame start and frame end. Frame start is the start of the loop, frame end is the end frame of the loop, and this use time button uh, lets you automatically select which frame. So if you are not using time, you can scrub this manually and select which frame you're viewing, which if you want to derive this material property block from a script, you can do that in the shader. But although this is nice for looping animations and some simple implementation of vertex animation textures, this isn't very friendly for actual gameplay. So what I've done with this advanced shader implementation is now when you process OpenVAT content with the advanced shader selected, You'll get the prefab and the material just like you did before. You also get this object that describes animation data. And in this, you can set animation splits. So for example, I have this character and I had three animations in his vertex animation texture, a run, a walk, and an idle animation all set on different frames. So for example, the run animation starts on frame 153 and ends on frame 171. And you'll notice each one of these has an option for looping and an option for frame rate. So as well as just having this data to be able to set your loop points, when it creates this prefab using the advanced shader, you'll see it also adds this VAT controller script, which gives you an initial playback mode of single or sequence. I'm just going to use single for this. Um, and you can see we can choose an animation index that he's going to play when he initiates. So if I set this to two, he will play his idle animation when he initiates in scene. But more than that, because I have these animations defined, I can trigger any of these animations independently at any given time. So I'll enter play mode to show you what I mean here. You can see here he initiated on his idle uh, because we set his initiation to single and animation index to three. Um, and now that we're in play mode, we can see these three buttons that say play run, play walk, and play idle. If I click these, he transitions smoothly into that animation and plays whatever animation that I choose. 
This is great for debugging an editor just to be able to toggle these really quickly. But within the script, these are actually public methods. And I'm probably going to expand on these public methods. But you can see we have play index, which plays the index of the animation chosen. So that for this character would be 0, 1, and 2, describing those three animations, uh, but can be as many animations as you want. Um, there is a public play method, which you can reference the animation name from that data set. And then we also have a play sequence public method where we, you can identify the minimum index and the maximum index of the sequence, and it will play in order through those animations. You'll notice too that each one of these methods has a transition time, and that's the amount of time that it takes to transition from one animation to another animation. And so when you call this from another script, you can just say play index 2, transition time 0.5, or however long you want that transition to be into that new animation and trigger it independently. All of this animation data is editable at any time. You can add new animations, you can remove animations, you can reorder the index of animations, and you can change the behavior of the frame rate and the looping. This is completely flexible to order any animations that you want, add multiple of the same animation, any kind of data that you want to describe here is possible. Then in our character, in this VAT controller, it references one animation data object, which is that animation data that we've been looking at. And it just becomes a clean way to control your vertex animation. So in addition to this, another thing that I've added into this advanced shader is frame interpolation. So let's say I set this run animation to a frame rate of three frames per second. Typically with vertex animation textures, these are locked frame for frame because each pixel defines a specific frame of an animation. But the shader is actually blending between two samples of the same texture to provide a clean interpolation between frames. So let's enter play mode again, and I'll trigger the run and show you what I mean here. You can see he's stuttering between frames. It's locking him frame for frame exactly at three frames per second. But if I turn on this option in the shader for frame interpolation, you'll see he moves completely smoothly at as fast of a frame rate as our game can run. This frame interpolation is optional because in some animations like VFX or fluid simulation, you might want something to disappear instantly when it scales to zero or some specific tricks like we do with fluid simulations, manipulating faces. But in a lot of cases like this, uh, where I have character animation, um, that smooth interpolation is really ideal. And it's really apparent when I change the frame rate to five frames per second. But even if this frame rate is set to 30, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it in this video, but you can tell when I turn it on and off just how much cleaner it is to have that frame interpolation being used. And on top of this, while it's interpolating between frames, we can still transition cleanly into our other animation states. So along with this, in the OpenVAT encoder in Blender, I'll be adding this animation data section where you can identify animation states before you run your vertex animation. And all this data will be stored in your JSON data so that this animation data object can create when you process your content. With the current encoding process, it will create one default animation for the length of your animation until I add this into the official release of OpenVAT. You can see in this vine growing animation here, um, this only has one animation, but it's set not to loop. And I've hooked up this really simple canvas to just have a play button that triggers it. And if you know anything about scripting for Unity, you should know how easy it is to hook into a public method like these play methods to trigger this however you want. So maybe a bounding box trigger that a character runs into foliage and it animates. Or even something more advanced like a character controller that is uh, triggering animations based on keyboard input. There's a lot more to come with this implementation, but it's finally at a point where I feel like I can share it. Feel free to pick up this Unity package from the OpenVAT GitHub. A little side note on these shaders, right now everything is done in shader graph. It's pretty easy to read, but it is kind of a giant um, 
shader node group right now. I'm looking to clean this up and make more variations that are keyword based and go from there. But if you're using this seriously for Unity, this should be a really good template to get started. Uh, so yeah, I'm looking forward to any feedback that anyone has using this. Be sure to like and subscribe if you're still here watching and have fun making some more vertex animation for your games.